What's going on, everybody? Paddle and Finn has got a meetup going down October 16th through 18th at Eastport Marina and Resort in Alpine, Tennessee, which which falls right on Dale Hollow. What we're going to be doing is just hanging out, fishing. Uh, depending on the number of people that show up and the interest, we may do a small tournament. Uh, we will have some stuff to give away. Saturday evening, we're going to do a hangout and a little little barbecue action we'll have food for everybody if you're looking for lodging you could stay right at the resort it's fifty dollars per person per night um, and what you get is your own personal bedroom on a houseboat luxury houseboat courtesy eastport marina that's a special price they gave us to lend to our listeners if you want uh, more info on the resort you can go to eastport.info and uh, their website will pop up there you'll see all the houseboats and things like that a majority of our hosts are going to be there and we would love to spend some time on the water with you this segment is brought to you by jigmaster jigs when in doubt get the jig out go to jigmasters.com and use promo code pnf20 and save 20 percent off your next jig order today you're listening to Bass Vision for Moves on the Paddle and Fin Podcast with your hosts Ryan Milford and Sean Lambert. Welcome back to Bass Fishing for Noobs on the Paddle and Fin Podcast. I'm Ryan. We got Sean in here. Hey guys, what's up? And we also have the jig master himself, Mr. Cody Jennings. Returning again for the third time. Welcome back. Yeah, do I get any uh, awards for that by chance? Well, you know, I might have to find some for you because you are now like the, uh, you know, being your third time, you're the most reoccurring guest on the noob show. Like like a coffee mug or something, right? (laughs) (laughs) You get a little card and we'll punch it out each time. When you get to five, you get something. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like uh, that. Let's see. Not counting the actual paddle and fin crew. Let's see. We've had Jody Queen on twice, so he's right behind you. He you, he was tied. Um, who else? I know we've had more people on more than one. Oh, uh, Hank Rogers, Bass Geek on YouTube. We've had him on twice. I can't remember if we've had more but uh but yeah this is your third time most reoccurring guest so you feel honored you get to come on here and talk with us <laughs> oh, i know i feel honored no uh, thanks for having me guys yeah good to have you back but yeah we were just you know we we like to have cody on periodically and you know just talk about some new stuff and you know changes within jig masters and all that good stuff um if you're new to the show, uh, Jigmasters is a sponsor of the show. Cody's the owner of the company. And, uh, you know, we really, a lot of us are like, like we, we stand behind his products. We know he puts out a quality product. He's always looking to improve his product. So that's why we like having him on as a sponsor and everything. But, uh, yeah, so where, where do we want to start? Like, you just want to. Well, right where uh, right where you left off there, where you said, um, you know, always looking to improve current products and stuff, and that would be a good place to start. Cool. So, yeah, so you've had, um, you know, you came out with a couple products. I know we've talked about it, um, but you have the uh, underspin and the uh, the swimming spin. And you uh, had some issues with that. So you want to like kind of go into that, like the issues and what you've done to improve on that and all that. Yeah, for sure. So um, actually on both of those, you were actually the first one to reach out. Um, And I was like, give you a hard time or stuff just because that's what I do for you. But, um, (laughs) you know, but you were having an issue with both the underspin and the swimming spin as far as the blade would, you know, come off eventually. Right. And, you know, fairly quick, you know, for the life of the lure. Um, But at the time, you were the only person that said anything. So actually what I did, instead of assuming, you know, hey, Ryan's just bad luck, um, (laughs) you know, I kind of figured that there's no way that, 
you know, this is just happening to him, right? So what I did was actually I reached out to pretty much everybody who I, you know, talked to on a decent basis that had ordered those same products and said, hey, like, are you guys having the same issue and stuff? You know, if so, please tell me. And, and there's a few of them that were, not everybody, but it was a good percentage, you know. Um, so on that point, please, any customers and anything out there, you know, if there's any issues with the product, always feel free to reach out. You know, um, one of the things is, is, you know, while I'm still relatively small and stuff like that, you know, I want to try to perfect as much as I can, you know. And um, so all that feedback's appreciated. Like, please don't be scared to reach out. Um, but anyway, so as far as what happened, the, uh, the wire form that was being used, um, did not have necessarily a consistent bend and there would be a little gap in the wire. Um, this is to the, the swim and spin discussion, but there would be a little gap in the wire, especially the blade typically on cast, um, or if a fish was shaken or something like that, sometimes the blade where it's attached to a swivel and split ring, it would slide out that, um, out that opening. Um, not necessarily anything when you're just reeling straight or any of that stuff, but it was typically either, you know, cast or if a, a fish was shaken. Um, and then for the underspin, though there was a wire form being used and even after crimping it and stuff like that, it was actually a sliding connector pin um just occasionally it would eventually open up and once again you know when it opens up there's an open gap you know the blade slides out um, so basically um ended up fixing those both with a, a similar wire form you know we went through uh, several options and you know trying to make sure that you know hey you know with what's out there in the market and stuff like i can still make it at a relatively decent rate but we need to get this Fixed, you know so and uh the beautiful thing is now is it's a fully closed loop in so there's no way that the blade there's no open gap or anything for that hook or the blade to slide out on right and to go back what you were talking about about reaching out if do or have an issue with the product you know well, me and you we we text each other you know here you know, not all the time, but we, we've texted quite a bit with each other. You know, this is your third time being on here. We've obviously talked a lot. So I, I felt comfortable reaching out uh, to you saying like, hey, this is the issue that I'm having. You know, a lot of people that, you know, don't know you or don't right. know you well, you know, they they might ha have an issue with like, like, I don't know, they don't want to come off wrong or something like that or or something like that. So, um, trying trying to get to the point that I'm trying to actually make. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like if y'all if y'all have an issue with a product, especially like Cody and Jigmaster is a smaller company. Like, you know, Cody Cody's willing to like look at the problem, try to fix it, and all that stuff. So. You know, even if you may not know Cody, like I know Cody or, you know, somebody that knows him better than I do, you know, still reach out. And this could go for other companies as well if you're having other issues. I feel like I butchered what I was trying to say right there. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, yeah, you I think know, you got I, the main I, idea out there. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, and one of the things, too, um, you know, no matter how – big I get or don't get or whatever, you know, regardless, I'm providing a product, you know, you guys are paying customers and your job as a paying customer is to get the best quality product that you can for, you know, the, the most reasonable price. Right. So, you know, still, you, you said you're a customer, you know, uh, I'm not going to use the adage that the customer is always right. Um, because obviously, you know, there are some out there that just reach out to, complain about stuff that doesn't happen you kind of got to do a little deep dive in there uh, but once again you know you guys are customers you know and i'm providing a product and a service so you know that's part of my job is to take that feedback into account um, and i know with sometimes whether it's a you know smaller company or bigger company or whatever you know maybe you've had a bad experience reaching out and that's actually goes all the way back to the story that led me to start jig masters period um, as far as actually being a lure company was I, I reached out to a, another jig company, uh, won't name any names, but 
they kind of sent me a nasty gram when I was detailing an issue they had, you know, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't saying, Hey, give me a bunch of free stuff. You know, I'm, I wasn't acting outraged or anything. I was just simple. Like, Hey guys, you might want to look into this kind of thing. just as a heads up. You know, and uh, instead of not replying, got a nasty gram back. And then hence I said, Hey, I think I can do better. And that's how jig masters really get going. You hmm. know, so. Well, that's cool yeah. that it's a, the, the basis of your business model then is to take care of your customers. I mean, I think it helps probably you as well to know if there is an issue, but also, I mean, you can do as much quality control as you want, but there's always going to be little things that probably slip through. So um, the yeah. sooner you know about that, the quicker you can make it better. So. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, that's, you know, before uh, like some of those lures, especially if it's, you know, a relatively new launch or something, you know, before there's, you know, 10,000s on the shelves at random stores, you know, I would prefer to find out um, as soon as I can, right? Yeah. You know, so I can make those changes before it's uh, too late and there's a, a big financial mess. It definitely makes sense. It, and not only that, like, reputation, because, you know, a lot of those, a lot of people generally aren't going to reach out or anything. They're just going to be like, well, I'm not going to use that product. And they're going to tell people like, oh, if you're going to get this, don't get this one because it's defective and all that. So, so yeah, definitely definitely feels good to know like, I was the first one to reach out to you <laughs> and, you know, save your reputation and all. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, and obviously, you know, I was, I was kidding some, you know, but, um, you know, when, you know, like especially like the swim and spin and stuff like that, those products have been out actually for a decent amount of time. Um, you know, so when you first reached out to me, I'm like, well, what the heck's he doing? You know, I like, you know, <laughs> plenty of them have sold and I haven't heard anything. I'm pretty uh, sure so you asked good. me that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, so that's why I, you know, I went back and reached out to, you know, I was able to kind of sort out and figure out, you know, what customers had purchased these and stuff like that and reached out to a pretty good amount of them and got their feedback. And yeah, there was probably about a, a 15%, you know, issue right there you know and that's way too much you know anything more than zero is too much so right on so those are completely fixed now they're you don't have to worry about blades coming off um are you are you still able to change the blades or did that kind of do away with that well so one of the uh the things with the underspin as I had as a quick change underspin, and the idea was, you know, they could they could slide the collar up, that locking collar, and put a new blade on if they already had it on a swivel. But then the more I got to thinking on it was, well, they could easily just change the blade on the swivel. Yeah. You know, they don't, you know, so really there wasn't a huge benefit there. The change would be a little bit faster, but no, you know, still a, a person can put on whatever blade they want fairly easy just with a pair of split ring pliers or a lot of times with blades, you don't even need split ring pliers because they're thin enough to open it up. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you, uh, want to kind of get into like some new product? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, as far as the lure side goes, you know, there's, uh, you know, kind of three new products out there are relatively new that, uh, you know, I'd like to touch base on, um, you know, that being the Marabou drop shot hook, uh, the skirted pivot head, and also the most recent release being, uh, the Dr. Six round rubber jig series. So, um, you know, I think yeah, I'm, start I'm interested in that to start with what I was going to say that we could uh, start with the Marabou drop shot here and then, through the list all right one second i'm gonna for people watching on youtube um let's see i'm going to pull this up here got this all right can y'all see it yeah yep. i can see it yeah all right so here's the marabou drop shot for the people watching on youtube so what's the application for this? Yeah, you know, so uh, really this is a, a drop shot style presentation, obviously. Um, you don't necessarily have to add any 
you know, any soft plastic to it or anything, you know, basically you're, you're hoping the moving it slightly or the current in the water is moving that marabou around. Um, and it's really, a, it's mainly a small mouth application. Um, the person, well, Josh Woodward um, up there in uh, Northern Wisconsin, he um, was the one that really pushed me to, uh, to make these. Um, and it's one of the things I've seen him catch plenty of big small mouth on. Um, it's pretty cool. Like you just wouldn't think it would really matter that much, but there's times where he'll throw a drop shot with, you know, your traditional, you know, worms, goby style baits, stuff like that. Um, or he'll throw a traditional, you know, the hair jigs and stuff like that, you know, where you're getting it on the bottom. And sometimes, especially when those fish are very, very finicky, um, the fish up there are notorious for like less action is more kind of thing, you know, a lot more subtleness to it uh, so there's a lot of times you know where he would throw those out and and essentially almost dead stick you know, and then all of a sudden like 30 seconds later or even just subtle subtle pops you know just barely moving the rod tip you know all of a sudden 30 seconds to a minute later you know then he would get hit um, you know he's really trying to keep this bait in place for the most part um, and sadly he uh he didn't see it the one time I was fishing with him on Sturgeon Bay. Um, he did almost hook what would have been probably about a seven pound smallmouth. Wow. Um, which was as he was just about to give up on the cast and rip the bait up, one darted at it and uh, just missed. Um, but he did catch plenty of four and five pounders on it. So it's uh, yeah. So it's a pretty it's a pretty cool and not so common technique, you know. And once again, I'm a big believer on throwing something a little different, you know, it's uh that's huge to me, especially as popular as bass fishing is getting now. Yeah. Um, actually to go a little bit off subject, I saw an article yesterday. I believe somebody shared it to paddle and fin page talking about like how, uh, bass are getting harder to catch. And it, it was pretty interesting. It was basically, you know, there, there was, a little bit of some other stuff to go on into it. But the thing that really caught my mind was saying that, you know, it seemed to be kind of genetic on which fish were easier to catch and which fish were um, harder to catch. And the easier to catch ones, you know, they get caught and then a certain percent of bass fishermen, you know, keep and harvest fish. Right. So the easy to catch ones um, eventually were, pretty much getting uh harvested right and so those genetics weren't being passed along like the ones that aren't that have the uh genetics to be hard to uh catch so basically the easier to catch genetic fish was getting killed out by being harvested yeah yeah, you know, and um, too, you know, I would assume some of that would be just, you know, the the, the fish down there, you know, predatory line there, you know, they're they're going to be adapting too, you know, and some, you know, that's, I mean, you look at like central Ohio is one of always the greatest examples, you know, outside of spring, a tournament's going to get one on nine pounds half the time, you know, it's just, it's very hard and it's like, you know, a keep five style, um, you know, it's, it's, they're highly pressured lakes and, um, yeah, that was another thing it talked about was pressure. Um, but it, it, that genetic things was just what stood out to me about right. that because you don't hear a whole lot of people talk about that. Right. No, for sure. You know, and, um, you know, and how I look at it too on the, uh, you know, the pressure size or the side of it, you know, is, I mean, it's, it's becoming hard to find your own spots now, you know. I mean, I, I can't imagine say how many times I've found like a random quarry or whether it's on a farm or something and somebody says, Oh yeah, fish it, you know, and like nobody's fished it in 20 years. Heck, you could go in there and catch them with your hand if you wanted to, you know, so there's pressure does, I know it's kind of a you know generality where people always say, ah, it's because increased fishing pressure, but it does have a, you know, a pretty big effect on it, you know? So like I said, anytime you can throw a little something different, you're, you're doing yourself some favors. Um, you know, and some of that stuff, it's going to be cyclical, right? You know, so one of my favorite examples of all time is when the chatterbait came out. 
so the, when the chatterbait came out it was basically right at the tail end of where nobody could catch a fish on a spinnerbait to save their life um you know and me included everybody you know because that's one of the most common baits thrown and when the chatterbait craze came out you know, people started hammering them on those things, you know, and then they were, you know, doing great. And then about three years in to the chatterbait craze, all of a sudden I realized I'm starting to catch a whole bunch of fish again on spinnerbaits and it's getting harder to catch them on chatterbaits. You know, it's just, like I said, it's, um, you know, throwing stuff's different. It doesn't mean throw all your tackle away and start over, you know, it's just, Hey, maybe we put that bait that everybody else is throwing we put it on the shelf for a year or two, you know, and then, uh, you know, bring it back out. You'll be surprised. I think that's happened to like the Whopper Plopper. Uh, I think, you know, people crushed it on that when it first came out. And then now I feel like that's happened to that. Same with the Senko. Um, I definitely have heard that, but, and as much as I like to share with people, what I'm catching on, I, that's always in the back of my mind is like, how much should I be sharing? You know, I want to, I want right, to see people, right. I want to see people catch fish, but I also don't want to ruin it for myself either. So, yeah, but yeah, uh, I kind of, I kind of thought the same thing about, you know, been on that underspin kick and kind of thought the same thing about that, but you know, feel like people were going to find it eventually. So, and, you know, that's what this show is about, is trying to help people get on more fish, so. Right, yep. But, uh, so cool, so, uh, was there anything else about that drop shot, or did you want to move on to the next one, or? Uh, no, I think we covered that pretty well. Um, yeah, so then the, uh, you know, the next one, uh, that we we're talking about here was the skirted pivot head. Um, let's bring that up here. But uh, this is a lure that might not necessarily look like much, but it excites me a lot um, because I love throwing pivot heads and I love throwing, you know, skirted jigs. And this would be a combination of the two, you know. So um, I'm the wrong you know, spot. Um, a little bit. Uh, Go Terminal? to signature series. Signature series, yeah. Yep, and then keep scrolling down. Uh, click next. Uh, don't see a next. Right there, there in the middle. The oh. Head. Yep. Oh, oh, right there. Uh, right there. There we go. Oh yeah, yep, I like so. that. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's, it's exactly what it is, you know, so it, it has a, you know, a free swinging hook, um, which is, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, that style just because you, you, at least in my mind, you have a much better landing percentage, you know, you get some extra leverage benefits out of that, you get some extra reaction time benefits out of that, you know, when they change directions, you know, the hook goes with them for a second compared to a grounded hook. You know, when they change directions, a lot of times that's when you end up losing the fish. Uh, you know, but yeah, so it's um, it's oh, the. Know. You know, Sorry, I, I didn't realize that there were so many more colors down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So it's um, so the the jig series, you know, flipping football and this as well, they're all um, pushed out to 15 colors now. Um, because after so many orders of, uh, if you look at the last one um i got a bunch of requests for custom orders for this that have finally got to the point it's like you know i might as well just offer it yeah one pretty cool color yeah yeah it's definitely a good dirty water color um i've had a few local lakes that you know actually for some weird reason even though they're clear water or lightly stained they still hone in on this color and i think once again it's getting you just to something a little different um, you know, yeah, it's definitely and, not really matching any forage or anything, you know, so. And for the people that aren't watching on YouTube, uh, that are listening, this, we're talking about the hot sauce color here. It looks like a, maybe like a green pumpkin or brown with some red and black in it from what I can tell. Yep. Yep. So it's a dark green pumpkin. Um, and then it has some black with red flake and then some red barbed wire in there. And obviously the red is the main feature that kind of stands out, which is yeah. once again, 
traditionally a better dirty water color. But, and that uh, then you uh, can Texas rig your your uh, trailer on there and make it weedless, I guess. Yep. Yeah. So just like you would with a you know a normal pivot head, you know where there's no skirt on it. Um, but you know where I'm really excited are there's some scenarios where it's hard to fish both a flipping or a football jig. And that is traditionally, or at least in my mind, would be like when you have like those concrete rip wrap thing, you know, where you have the big, big chunk concrete all down, stuff like that, uh, where I love throwing pivot heads, um, especially like on Lake Erie, stuff like that, you know, like a lot of like the break walls, you know, stuff like that. And, and um, so this is one of those lures that, once again, allows you to fish a skirted presentation, but you can come through that cover very well and not get hung up. Yeah, I like that. Um, it uh, it almost seems to me like like in my mind when I'm thinking about it, it's kind of like a stand up, less intense version of the punch rig, I guess in a way. Like like kind of where you don't necessarily need that heavy of a weight to like really punch through mats, and you still want it to stand up. I I kind of feel like that'd be a good like I'm talking about like heavy cover where you wouldn't necessarily want to throw one of the typical jigs right uh uh, because you know even though you do have the weed guarding still get hung up sometimes in that really yeah uh, yeah with the weed guards too i hate the name weed guard you know it's really a brush guard you know it helps you come through it's stuff better it collects weeds let's be honest (laughs) (laughs) um but, um, you know, with this, too, the nice thing with a, a swinging style hook is if you do get hung up, especially like in a rock or something, timber's a little harder. But with rock, you know, you can kind of, you know, tighten and pop your line and what have you know, get it super tight, let it loose. And what happens is that the weight area, it'll fall right back down, back like right in line with the hook shank or, you know, the straight arm of the hook there. And a lot of times it'll actually pop you back out of the, especially with rock. But I've had a lot of times where I get hung up and I just pop the line once and it comes right out. You know, mm-hmm. then you kind of keep fishing that cast. But it's a it's a really good way, you know, both the pivot head and the skater pivot head is to, you know, fish those kind of jig style presentations, but cover a lot of water too. You know, traditionally when fishing these, you know, you're going to make long, like, especially with like riprap banks, stuff like that, you know, I'm making long parallel casts to the bank and then, you know, letting it get to the bottom, uh, which they, for the most part, you know, sink pretty fast. There's not too much drag there and just keeping the rod tip low and just having a real slow retrieve on it. And between that hook being able free to move and then whatever trailer you're using, you know, it's all doing the action for you, you know, so you, you really just kind of slow roll it on the bottom. Not yeah, dragging it, you're actually reeling it. Yeah, so I let it, I let it get to the bottom and instead of like doing the little pops and stuff like that. Like I just keep my rod tip, you know, relatively low, and I just do a real slow retrieve with it about ninety okay. percent of the time. Are you using like a crawl trailer on that? Yeah, um, I traditionally am always using either for these would either be like a four inch trigger crawl um, or a uh, like a Berkeley or not Berkeley um, Strike King Rage Bug. Um, those are probably my two favorite for these, but there's a, typically I use like a crawl style, something with a, you know, a lot of action on the, you know, the claws. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna have to pick some of those up and give them a shot. Now I'm get. is it safe to assume that don't come in the light wire, right? Um, so it's actually a medium wire hook. So like, if you look at my standard jig, it is a, heavy wire hook, even though it's a, you know, four out, but it is a heavy wire four out. Um, and then you have the light wire series, which is a four out, but that's a, a def- definitely a light wire. Um, these hooks here would be in between the two. Okay. It's not too bad. Cause you know, we've talked about it several times on here with the uh, light wire, you know, that's, that's, that's all I use is when it comes to like the flipping and, and, uh, uh, football heads. You know, that's all I use is the light wire, and we've talked about it, how that lighter wire, you know, it allows easier penetration. And, you know, in a, most of us, well, everybody here on the podcast is a kayak fisherman. Most yep. of our listeners 
while we're kayak fishermen. So we don't have that leverage from, you know, we're in a lightweight plastic boat. We're going to move with a hard hook yep. set. So that light, light wire allows for that easier penetration compared to the heavier wire where you're going to have to get a really good hook set on it. So without having a medium, um, having that, that medium wire, I, I'd, I'd say you'd probably still be able to penetrate pretty well with that from a kayak. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very sharp hook too. Um, and then also a lot of times with these, you know, you're hooking fish when the bait's on the move, you know, which that helps as well. You know, you get the momentum of the lure. So a lot of times, you know, the fish are almost hooking themselves and then you're loading up the rod. Um, compared to a traditional jig, you don't have that, right? You're doing little hops on the bottom. Oh, then you feel it, pick it up, you reel down and try to hammer on it, right? But um, so it's a little different there as well. So there shouldn't be any issues with, uh, with hookup ratio with these. Sweet. I, I could have used that for that jigs tournament back in uh, June. Yeah, you were uh, really trying to create a ruckus there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, all I was thinking the whole time was, Ryan, please don't come in last. <laughs> <laughs> Which I believe you took second, if I recall, correct? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, love to hear it. Uh. Yeah, we we have a lot of uh, local people that are fans of a, another jig company, and they didn't like when I posted about uh, about my order to jig masters and how I was gonna beat them with jig masters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, I was just uh, happy that you actually did really well in that tournament. So yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> didn't want to have to eat crow there, so. Um. All right, so let's. What what we got next coming up? Um, yeah, so um, this would be in the Doctor Six series. Um, so, and just so everybody knows, uh, uh, Doctor Six, his name's Ron Six. Um, he is a fisherman that I've been working with for a while out on a, on the West Coast. He's out in Oregon, and um, you know, very very nice guy. Uh, you know, stuff like that. And he started winning a, a winning or placing high in a bunch of tournaments using my flipping jig. Um, he ended up getting a hold of one by uh, pretty much dumb luck almost. You know, he didn't really know about jig masters or anything. Uh, there's a tournament circuit that he was fishing, and I believe he's still a part of, called All-Star Bass Fishing. Um, and they kind of do a, an in some interesting tournaments. You know, a lot of them are like bracket style. Um, and in some of them, when they have like some like tournament sponsors, stuff like that, part of the deal is, you know, when you're going head to head with somebody for one hour, you have to use one of the sponsoring companies lure, you know, there might be three or four there or whatever. And, uh, and he's a big jig fisherman and I was the only jig company there. So he just grabbed my flipping head by default and had the same comment that everybody else has had. Like, ah, it looks kind of funky. I don't really know about it, but I really need a jig. So he threw it. And um, ended up winning that tournament and, uh, you know, falling in love with his head design. Um, comes through cover grade. He loves how, how easy it is to skip. Uh, but one of his one of his things, and I mean, he's older guy, but not, you know, incredibly old. But um, a lot of uh, anglers out there, especially a lot of the tournament anglers out there, really like round rubber, which is, you know, something that's kind of in probably the last, especially the last, 15 years almost, you know, it's really becoming less and less and less popular. It's starting to make a little bit of a comeback now, but um, the main reason is, is it's not really pretty. You know, it's flat colors um, and there's only about seven colors to choose from, you know, on the bait manufacturer side, you know, so you can't get the, it, it's pretty tough to come up with, you know, 15 useful colors like I do with the silicone material. Um, but the benefit to round rubber is it has a lot more action than your standard silicone skirting will. So even a subtle tweak where like that skirt will flare, you know, really, really aggressive. Um, you know, a lot of times that's, you know, when you're getting bit, you know, that, that skirt opens way out wide, even on a, you know, a subtle tweak or, you know, twitch or anything. And, uh, you know, presents that, you know, your jig trailer there 
very nicely. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of people who still use these and kind of keep it to their self, kind of, you know, what you were talking about earlier, Sean, about, uh, you know, not wanting to give away all the secrets, but, um, you know, we'll probably be adding a couple more colors here soon, but this is, uh, we just launched this about, uh, I think about a week and a half ago. The colors don't look bad. You know, you can definitely tell it's a flat color, but I, I'd throw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm no, definitely just, just interested. Say, you know, see. Especially this color here, this green and brown. Yeah. I'd be all over that. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's, um, and like I said, it's not that it looks bad. It's just, you know, it's a flat color, you know, so when you have a bunch of these on the shelf or something, they don't stick out as much as the super vibrant silicone skirting does, you know, so they, they often get overlooked, but still works. Yeah, I definitely am interested in that. One thing that I did notice here on the website, it, this one has the heavy wire hook, correct? Uh, this one does for now. Um, so, like I said, we just launched this about a week and a half ago. Um, and it, so this would be the same hooks that's in my HD flipping and football at the moment, but we will be going back and adding the light wire series. Um, I do believe we are going to go up to a five out though for the light wire. Okay. Yeah. You, you got to get me a light wire. Uh, <laughs> for that. Yeah. I can do a couple of custom ones for you in the meantime, before we get them launched. All right. I will take it. All right. So, Whoa. I miss. Okay, so that's are you you're you're basically going to use that the same way you would any other flipping jig, correct? Or or football yeah, head yeah. because there was a football head option. I was showing the flipping head. Yep, yeah, yeah. There's both flipping and football. Um, you know, it's the same head designs that I use for my you know the the signature series. Um, really, the only difference there is it's uh you know has that silicone skirting material. Uh, once again, has a wire tie in there to prevent it from slipping. Um because silicone is, or the round rubber skirting material is a lot more slippery than your standard silicone is, where a lot of times your silicone almost tries to grab or stick a little bit. Um, this will definitely not. So it is and, wire tied out there just to make sure it doesn't slip. And you were talking about the colors. I honestly, in as far as jigs go, like the real like bright, vibrant colors I've never really had much luck on like the, I guess more of like, I, I feel like, like this one here, I was talking about the green and Brown, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a dull green and Brown. I feel <laughs> like that's going to benefit you when it comes to jig fishing. It, it, from my experience with jig fishing, you know, I, I feel like I can really do well with this color right here. Yeah, you know, and uh, once again, you know, it, it gets you back to a little bit different, you know, than what else is on the market, you know. But like, if you go to the black and blue on there, and then I think I got one thing in yeah, right on the head there. You know, I mean, if for you know those people that are you know watching on YouTube and stuff, you know, you can tell just how different you know my standard black and blue is compared to you know the round rubber, you know. Yeah, and. You know, I've I've caught fish on your black and blue um, silicone, like yeah. the normal light wire. Yeah. Um, that that's actually what I caught my big fish with uh, in that tournament we were talking about. But this one here, you know, when you get a light wire version of this, this I don't know, I might be switching to this because I, I really like the look of it. Because like like I was saying, like I don't know, generally when I'm throwing a flipping jig, I'm trying to imitate a crawfish. Right. And, you know, I, I feel like crawfish, you don't typically see a whole lot of, like, bright, vibrant colors on them. Yeah, I mean, you, you like, occasionally do on, you know, relative, like, depending on the species time of year. But for the most yeah, part, and yeah. most of their, you know, most of their uh, you know, kind of shell color and stuff during the year, you know, they're, they're relatively dull, right? You know, more dull or brown, dark, almost blackish, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, compared to like when you're trying to do shad imitations, you know, shad reflects sunlight like crazy. Um, you know, so yeah, so yeah, so the, the duller, the flatter color, you know, would probably be resemble more of a crawdad for a majority of its life cycle. Sweet. We got more, right? 
Um, as far as the lures, that uh, that kind of covers all the you know okay. the recent the you know design updates or going through some of the newer launches here. Um, one of the other things too here is uh, you know hopefully by the time everybody's hearing this that Jigmasters will be having the apparel line back up. Um, a lot of new items, you know, performance hoodies, uh, a new performance long sleeve. Um, you know, we're, we're doing uh, like some women's race back tanks. Uh, we're doing performance quarter zips, both in men's and women's. Um, you know, then we're bringing back the comfort tees and crew necks and a couple of hats and stuff. There's one hat actually coming back that hat, or not coming back, it's a new hat that has sold out twice already before it's even been online. Um, oh, wow. just from people seeing it in the shop or whatever, or seeing a couple of them in my truck and stuff when I first picked them up. So, um, so and I'm pretty you haven't excited. sent me any pictures. I have not. No, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm already out of stock. You can't, you know, so, but, um, yeah, so hopefully we'll get everything on here. Um, you know, before everybody gets to listen to this. So. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. So, uh, you said, you know, we're recording this on Sunday. You said it might be all out there uh, by tomorrow morning. If not, it should be on by Tuesday morning. Correct. Yep, that's correct. Cool. Sweet. Um, was there anything else you wanted to cover on any of that new new product, old product? Um, no, you know, it's just that, uh, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, everybody kind of keeps supporting and, uh, you know, I have a lot of return customers, which is, you know, good feedback for me that says, Hey, I'm doing, you know, something right, apparently. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just really everybody helping get out the word, you know, about Jigmasters. It's a pretty easy, uh, you know, website to remember, just jigmasters.com, you know, and uh, as far as soon as the apparel hits or whether you need lures, stuff like that, you know, and, you know, obviously help support if you do, or if anybody does have any questions on, you know, maybe if they're not sure, like, you know, what, what are like the must have colors or, you know, what colors are really popular in their area and stuff, you know, I don't have any issues, you know, trying to help them pick out, you know, a small, like, I'm not going to be the person that says, oh, everything's great for your area, buy everything, you know, it's not yeah. really my style, you know, I want to try to give everybody valuable feedback. So always feel free to reach out, you know, whether it's for, you know, feedback on, hey, you're having some issues with some of the products or whether it's just like, hey, you know, what would you recommend? And we wanted to say thank you as well for your continuing support of our show. So um, you're definitely always there to help us out and uh, uh, hook us up when we need it, too. So thank you. Yep. Not a problem. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys soon here in October. Yeah. So it, does that mean you are coming? I, I was gonna mention it, but yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure to be there. All right, guys. So Thursday night, uh, Brian on the live show announced our our uh, paddle and fin meetup we're having in October. It's we've been saying Dale Hollow is technically the river um, connected to Dale Hollow. It's not far from Dale Hollow though. So, but. Uh, you know, we released a little flyer with some details. Some of those details might change a little bit. You know, we're still trying to figure it out. I think a lot of it's going to depend on how many uh, listeners actually want to come meet up. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're we're trying to, you know, we announced on there we're going to have a barbecue or grill out, depending on where you're from. It, 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 is that a northern thing to call a grill out a barbecue? Yes. <laughs> See, I never heard see, a grill out before. Yeah, like yeah. down here, it's like, hey, let's let's go uh, let's go grill out. <laughs> yeah, throw some burgers and hot dogs on the grill. Yeah, yeah, to me, if you're gonna barbecue, like you're actually making barbecue. Like you know, yeah, I'm with you on this one, Ryan. No, we uh, typically like grilling means you're gonna do something traditional, like you know, burgers or hot dogs, brat stuff like that. But yeah, no barbecues. You know, most of the time for people around here too. You know, they're smoking the meat. You know you know, sauce, stuff like that. So yeah, I'm with you on this one, Ryan. They're different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we were going to, you know, do that kind of stuff, but I believe we might be figuring something else out with the restaurant there at the Marina where, you know, hook us up on a deal, which would make it a lot easier on the people that were going to be cooking anyways. Um, so, you know, everybody can enjoy their time. there, not stuck on a grill the whole time, especially if we do have a lot of people show up. But, uh, 
Yeah, uh, JL Folks, we had him on a while back. He's supposed to be there. Uh, he said he's going to bring his guitar. You know, we'll pick around a little bit. I'll bring my guitar. I suck, but, you know, I, pick a little, <laughs> I, I, I do a little bit, and, you know, I'm sure other people there will be able to play a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to be staying at the marina. Uh, the, I believe he's the owner there. He might be a man. I'm pretty sure he's the owner, Richard there. Man, he's, uh, he's like really interested in, you know, like he, he's excited about us coming and checking it out. You know, he's, uh, you know, he started selling kayaks there. He's got vibe right now. He's trying to get some other brands. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, this this is this is gonna be pretty awesome. I can't wait to get down there. It's gonna be fun, yeah. and and it's gonna be, it's gonna be it's gonna really be good fun. time. It's gonna be fun. Uh, we're gonna put Cody in a kayak. You know, he's generally a bass boat guy, but we're gonna get him in a kayak and let him see what it's like. Yeah, I've uh, I fished out of one at the, um, oh, what's it, Lake Cowan. Uh, that's when I actually met Brian and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, since then I haven't been able to get in one. You know, it's, uh, I haven't really been fishing that much either compared to how much I would like to <laughs> hear but, uh, oh, you ain't had yeah. no time to go fishing. Yeah. Yeah. No, you guys are keeping me busy and that's a, it's a good problem to have, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's what I tell my dad, you know, who he, he's in the HVAC business, got his own business and, you know, he's, he's like, man, we're booked out for like two or three weeks and stuff. I'm like too much works better than not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Especially during times like this, you know, so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the meetup, if you are interested, you know, I, I believe it's the October 16th through the 19th, I believe. Um, but, yeah, if y'all are interested, you know, uh, look, get on Paddle and Finn Facebook page, and there's a little flyer. It shows you the number to call. Uh, you know, Richard that I was talking about there at the marina, he wants you to call him directly instead of calling the marina um just so there's no confusion you know he's yep. setting it all up so uh, if y'all want to uh want to come out there i mean i, I believe it's 50 dollars a night per person yep. so not too bad because it, it's going to be i believe the where he's having a stay is pretty luxurious pretty nice and uh we're right there on the water um yeah there, there was something else i was going to cover what was i going to cover I can't remember what I was going to say. So I guess I won't say it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I appreciate you coming on here again and, you know, maintaining your title is the most. uh, (laughs) Yeah. If I ever ever get passed though, you need to reach out immediately. All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks again, Cody, for uh, coming back on and uh, sharing your new stuff with us. Oh, uh, I just remember what I was going to say. Sorry, sorry, Sean. Sorry. No, go for it. I, I, I had to get this for you. Um, first off, if you want to order uh, some Jig Masters, make sure you use promo code PNF20 for 20% off. And second off, giveaway. It's been a while since we did a giveaway, so... You know, I figured let's do one. Let's do, we say, two ten dollar Jigmaster gift cards. I was gonna do just one twenty, but you know, there's not an t- option for twenty, so let's do two ten dollar. And uh, you know, I I I don't really like people that just follow the Facebook page but don't actually listen to us be, getting our giveaways. I like the people that are actually supporting us listening to the podcast to, you know, be the ones that win it. So you got to listen to the podcast to win this giveaway. Um, what do you think? Like comment the, oh, okay. If you've if tried jig masters before, uh, there'll be a post Monday morning about the show, like going over the details of the show. We do it on all the episodes every, every day. Um, comment on that post. Say, uh, if you've tried Jig Masters before, say what your favorite lure is of Jig Masters. And if you haven't 
just comment what lure you're most interested in trying and we'll everybody that puts in for that we will put that in a random generator we'll pick two winners get each person get a ten dollar master's gift card does that sound good yep that sounds good awesome all right guys remember and when you (laughs) whenever you win make sure you use that pnf 20 yes all right well, uh, again, thanks, Cody. Um, this has been the Bass Fish for Noob segment of the Paddle and Pit Podcast. We're bringing you the techniques, the tricks, and the tips to help you rip more lips. Thanks, guys, for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Later.